how Jimmy Doyle lived hurling from the age of three, how as a boy he recruited his sheepdog to help him develop the ball control which marked his game, how his teacher promised him he'd fail his exams but captain Tipperary to an All-Ireland final. And Sean Scully talks about his painting style, his indebtedness to great painters of the past and on being an internationally acclaimed painter and an Irish painter. Later this morning, this. You know, I'm a warrior poet. That's an Irish cliché, but that's what I am. Sean Scully later. This week, one of the great hurlers of the 20th century died. My father was a sure appearer, and, and uh, he made me a small little pair of hurling boots when I was, let's say, about three. Jimmy Doyle, who twice captained Tipperary to All-Ireland finals and won six All-Ireland medals. And he put little cogs in them and... I was always very interested in hurling. I always loved it. Actually, as as a baby, when I used to be going to bed at night, my mother used to have to come up to the hurling, the sports field here, and, and shout at the gate to me to come home to bed. And when I go home, I'd bring me little hurlies with me, and I'd, I'd be lying them in, actually like a mattress, and I'd have my hurling balls under my pillow. So in the night time, my mother used to come out, uh, come into the room and, and take the, the hurlies out from under me and also the hurling balls. And I'd wake up during the night and I'd bring, ba- bring the hurlies back into the bed again with me. So it'll just tell you that uh, hurling, uh, it's a fabulous game. It's, it's, it's a glorious game. I always loved it. Donny Nealon, a contemporary teammate with Tipperary, described Jimmy Doyle this week as an absolute artist, an icon and a legend. He could nearly make the ball Talk. Donny Neal, I'm trying to get inside Jim Tracy. Jim Tracy robbed by Jimmy Doyle, and Jimmy Doyle is going through. He's 30 yards out. He takes a shot that's gone high and has gone over the bar for a point. During my school days, uh, Brother Boland, he was a great man, but during my school days, I wasn't a great man for lessons, or I wouldn't do my lessons because I always turned my school books into the corner. My mother done my lessons for me. And I get me holly and ball and up to the field with me dog. I had a dog. He was a very cute dog. He used to catch the ball for me and bring it back to me. But uh, I used to try and outwit the old dog. You know, he was a sheep dog. He used to grab the ball, snap it in the air, and I'd hunt to hold the ball, and he'd grab it. And uh, the dog and myself trained each other. But it came to the primary set, which I knew I wouldn't pass because I hadn't any interest in school. And all I wanted to do was hold, hold. That was me life. And uh, brother Ball and. The, the morning of the of the exam said brought us into the classroom and he said look at lads he says every one year he says are all perfectly ready he says for the phrases but I'm afraid he says there's one man here he says I think he won't pass and that's you Jimmy Dial he says and I said to him look at brother I said don't worry I said I'll be all right now I went into that exam and I didn't I didn't uh, I didn't do the exam I wasn't able I hadn't the brains enough to do it because all I wanted was hull. But he, di- he told me that, he, he, he said to me that, I will predict one thing, he says, that you will, he says, play for Tipperary in a senior All-Ireland, he says, and you will captain a Tipperary senior All-Ireland team. Now, in 1962, I did captain that Tipperary senior All-Ireland team, but I broke my collarbone and I was carried off and I was strapped in the dressing room to the stretcher and the, in the dressing room. And I could have went out for the cup that day, but... They, they had me strapped to the, to the stretcher and they told me, the, the Knights of Martin had told me that I could receive the cup on the stretcher, which I wouldn't do. I didn't want, I just want, I wanted those things, I wouldn't do that. So Tony Wall, a club man in my own, I suppose one of the greatest centre-half backs, I suppose, in my times anyway, uh, took the cup for me. He was a club man in my own. He, he got the cup. And so that was 1962. I broke my collarbone and I didn't, I didn't receive the cup. But I... Didn't see Brother Boland, but in 1965, I captained that Tipperary team again. And that year, I got away with it. I received the cup, and as I received it, when I turned around to give me my speech, I saw Brother Boland right in front of me. He was standing in a, in, a, in a patch on his own, out behind the crowd. And I took the cup, I went down to Brother Boland, and I handed him, and I went over to him, and he says, Jimmy, he says, my prediction is right. It's high and it's over the bar. Another point for Jimmy Doyle and Tipperary. Now, Jimmy, at the moment uh, I read from the newspapers that you are either neck and neck or seven points ahead of Christy Ring on the, on the scoring chart. This is Pat Laid with Ono Mahoney 
on a Meet the Clans programme. The clan, of course, was the Doyles, and Jimmy Doyle was one of the guests. Is that the position at the moment? Yes, sir. Uh, under Sunday Review, I'm seven pints in front of the ring. The Sunday Review is not always correct, is it? But it's, correct on, it's correct on this occasion. I it? hope so. Oh, <laughs> very glad to hear. And uh, Irish Independent, but even. You're even. So, well, now, what, we, what are your views on this? Uh... Oh, well, it depends on the matches we play. The Independent is more or less sticks to Championship and League. They're including more matches than the Sunday Review. Well, uh, the Sunday Review plays all games, I think. Does the Sunday Press make any prophecy? Well, the Press only go for Championship. I see. Well, does this mean anything other than the honour of it? Uh, ah, no, no, just more or less form. Yes, form indeed, but it's certainly good form if you can get ahead of Christie. Jimmy Doyle began his championship career as a Tipperary minor, and he was then just 14. I never liked the goal. And in those early years, he was a goalkeeper. I always thought that if, if uh, you let in an old goal... You'd always be blamed for it. So, like, you could always make up for it as a forward. And as I say, uh, I always wanted to get out of the goal, and which in which I did. Brother Doody, the superior of the total CBS team, Lord mercy him. Uh, I asked him one evening coming home in a car after the minor all Ireland to know what he put me out in the forward line that I didn't like the goal. So he says the total Dean Ryan team were playing the following Wednesday, and he told me he put me out wing forward on the Dean Ryan Cup team, and that's where I started as a forward. Racing out of the far side of the field after going down along the far wing now, chasing after Jimmy Doyle, Jimmy Doyle gets the ball in and on the ground, and, oh, <laughs> that was a deceptive one there. Jimmy Doyle sent it in along the ground, and goalkeeper Mike Sweeney of Knock Ray watched it as if it was going to go over the end line, but then it suddenly seemed to take a turn and turn towards the goal, and he just scooped it out over the end line for a 70. 70 taken by the Tipperary captain, Tony Wall, and the Clonmel lad sends it into the back of the net. In the 1950s and 60s, Jimmy Doyle's prolific scoring ability became legendary. This is from Colm Keane's documentary on Jimmy Doyle. From the very beginning, he scored freely. Two goals and eight points for tip minors in the 55 All-Ireland final. Two goals and three points in the next year's minor All-Ireland against Kilkenny. And almost a thousand points for the senior tip side. An accuracy, control and ball skill rarely seen in the sport of hurling. That came from an, a, a young age. As I said, I had a, a sheepdog. He, he, he was, he was a, a kind of... An, uh, when I'd be coming in from school, the, the, the dog would have the holly in his mouth waiting for me. He'd know I'd be coming along. You see, a dog is, is, very, is uh, very cute. You, you can get very cute sheepdogs. Now, that, that dog, pa, uh, Billy was his name, he, he could outwit me when i throw the ball up to hit it. And I'd be, I, when I'd be going to hit the ball, I'd pull it back. And he was all the time watching the ball, and, and, and when I'd hit it, he'd make a drive at it, and I'd try to outwit him to try and hold it or catch it before it hit the ground. And if I didn't, he'd snap it, he'd have a got. Now, that, that, that's where ball control came into my hurling. Now, for the freeze, uh, there was, there was a, a, a door under the scoreboard, a green, big green door, and I used to give hours and hours on my own, banging a ball over that green door from every angle, running, hitting them backwards, hitting them sideways, and I got my accuracy from all that. Jimmy Doyle to take it, about 25 yards out, the sun beaming into the eyes of the defenders, and Jimmy has sent it over the bar for another point. Jimmy Doyle, the top scorer of the decade, as I say. In my day, I didn't give a care what it was or where it was, it always take me point. If there's a, 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 an easy free, I just pop it over. If there's a hard one, I try it, I go for it. I often walked away from a free. I remember above in, in, in the National League final, again, Kilkenny and Crow Park, that uh, the, the, the ball was off out of the line. Now, it was almost in the middle of the field, and I called Donny Nealon over to take it. Now, I, I kind of, I lost me, I don't know, what it, I, I don't know why, why I called him. But I just called him. I looked at the post and I said, no, I'm not taking it. And I, I, next thing, all of a sudden, I called Donny. I said, Donny, come over and have a shot at it. Try it yourself. And as Donny was coming over, I walked away and I turned. And I came back to Donny. Donny, no, I'll, I'll try it. Like, I lost my confidence at one stage and I regained it as I was walking away. And when I took it, there was no turn with it. It just went direct. To, I suppose... It, it, it isn't a nice thing for a person to praise himself, but I'd say it was one of the easiest pints I ever scored and one of the hardest ones I probably ever hit. But that ball did go straight between the posts. And as I say, a pint, I, I'd always take me score. I didn't give a care where it was or how easy I got it. 
I'd always take a pint, because as I always say, the goals will come. Sports Review, 1961. A flashback on the highlights in Irish sport during the past 12 months. Presented by Philip Green. I trained hard for it, you know, but uh, we won it anyway. And I suppose to win your first All-Ireland is a big thing. At one point, it looked as if an ankle injury would keep him out of that final. I went home. I went upstairs. I didn't doubt even say to my mother or father. I went up and I laid in the bed and I cried out like the rain. And Dr Hurley came to the house and he uh, he told me mother and father he wanted to know where I was. And they said, he, I was upstairs. So they called me down and he says, Jimmy, he says... He says, you failed your test. He says, I'm afraid you won't make it. He says, but he says, you can make it. He says, provided. He says, that you do what I ask you. And I said, that means, I said, I can hurl if I do. Well, he says, it's going to be up to your father and mother whether they'll give you the, the all clear, whether you can, uh, you, they'll let you do what you want to do, that I want you to do. So that is, he says, I'll have to give you two injections before the game. He said, deaden the, the, the ankle f- up to the knee. So in other words, he says, if you break the ankle again, he says, if the, if the ankle is broken, he says, you won't know it. So my father said to me, well, he says, Jimmy, he says, it's up to yourself. He says, if you want to do it, he says, you can do it. So I was thrilled. I said, no problem. I said, I'll, 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 I'll chance, which I did on the day. But I got away with it up to half time, came back out in the field, and just, it was about five minutes from the end, the ankle started to get very sore. Now I was after getting away with it. And... Uh, the ankle was getting very sore and I pulled out over the line and Paddy Lahey told me to go back in. He said, because Tony Wall and Kieran Carey had left the field. That meant there was there was no subs. There was supposed to be another sub there, but I think somebody else went in. But I uh, I was told to go back in. I turned back and oh, to, to, to go back over the line. I was walking on me on me heel. And just when I turned around to go back into the field, the ref blew full time. He was an All-Ireland runner-up on three occasions and won six All-Ireland medals, captain in 1962 and 1965. And to mark the centenary of the GAA in 1984, Jimmy Doyle was named on the hurling team of the century. And he was also named on the hurling team of the millennium in 1999. I was nearly gone in 1971. Uh, uh, like, actually, I, I had disc trouble on me life. I had back trouble on me life. And, like, as I say, when you have disc trouble, there was a man looking after me back, Jimmy Heffern and the Dragon. He, he used to put discs back for me. He put 14 of them back. Well, uh, actually, uh, as a young fella, I had the disc out, and I didn't ever think I'd ever hurl. But uh, my father brought me up to Jimmy Heffern, and, and he put back two discs of me back. They were out for years. And uh, they, they were always giving me trouble. They slipped from time to time. And Heffern, Jimmy Heffern often went to matches with me now in his own care and put back those discs for me. After, even the day after, if, if, if there's a Munster final or a, an All Ireland semi final, he'd shove the discs back for me at half time or when I go in, he'd always shove the disc back for me. But uh, in 1971, things were starting to slow down a bit. I was getting on in years, and I, you know, as I always say, there's always a time to start and there's always a time to finish. And I knew that time was coming, that, you know. And in 1971, I was a sub. I, 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 I started in Killarney in a Munster final again Limerick, but I was I was brought out. I had back trouble. Me, you see, the slower I was getting, the older I was getting. The back was starting to come against me, and I, actually, I suppose I was lucky to get in for ten minutes of the '71 All Ireland again, Kilkenny. I was very very lucky, because my back was just about gone, and I still up to today. I still have back trouble. Jimmy Doyle to take this free. It's about thirty yards out. It's almost in front of the goal. And Jimmy sends it over for another temporary point. People comes to me and say, are you, are you, are you? You know, and I, I don't like answering it. You know, a person say, I, I, you're, not, you're not Jimmy Dyer. Are you Jimmy Dyer? And I thought you were a bigger man. And, you know, I'm just an ordinary person. I do me, go to work in the mornings. I come home from work. I go to Mass every Sunday. Like, I'm just an ordinary person. I don't want to be remembered as nothing. I, as a matter of fact, if a person starts talking about me, I start to sweat. I suppose in, in fear of complex. But uh, what I do love is, from, from an old player, is to meet the old players and talk to them. 
you know, I, I get a great kick out of meeting the likes of Tom Cheese, you know, or Tony Mayer or Ray Cummins. I have some great friends. And this is how Colum Keane's documentary on Jimmy Doyle concluded. I have arthritis now, I have it in my hands and all my joints and my knee and my ankle and my back and my collarbone. But I suppose, no matter what I have, I still, if I was to turn the key and go back and go in an open door, I'd still go back and do it all over again. The ball goes on the loose now to Jimmy Doyle. Jimmy Doyle in possession. is blocked by Titty Ferguson. Titty to Des Foley. Des Foley up the field. Right. John Doyle is there again for Tip John, getting it up into his hand on his own 70-yard line. And the referee has called for the ball and temporarily out at Campton. And that feature was to mark the career of hurling legend Jimmy Doyle, who died on Monday last at the age of 76. Next week...